What is up everybody, Dan in the Fireman here, back on the motorcycle, and we're gonna be talking about how to ride in this blistering heat, and when I say blistering, it's 97 degrees at 9.42 a.m. It's gonna get well over 100 today, probably when I'm riding, and I want you guys to know these tips. I got four of them that's gonna help you out when it comes to riding in the heat. I learned a lot of this from being a firefighter, having to wear full turnout gear with no breathability, and man, did that suck, but I found ways to make it work and it's so much easier when you're on the motorcycle. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one and let's just straight up talk about it. You know, summer is a season, so get seasonal gear. You got winter gear, you got summer gear, you got three season gear, you got all season gear, all these different things. You gotta figure out what works well for you in your climate, your area, or wherever you're traveling. So for me personally, it's always hot down here in Tucson, even in the winter time. And if it gets really cold, let's say I decide to ride first thing in the morning in the winter time, I still wear all this. I just put extra layers on. So don't worry about that. We're focusing on uh, patterns right here. I see the side of the vehicle, making sure they're not coming out at me. So still being situationally aware. But when it comes to the summer stuff, make sure you get seasonal gear. If you notice, I got mesh gear right here. So I got a lot of mesh on the inner portion. So when I'm sitting like this, holding the handlebars, I got a lot of airflow going in. But if you look on the outside, it's got abrasion resistant material. So when we talk about motorcycle crashes and everything, as you go down, you're typically gonna put your elbow down, hand down, all that stuff. It's usually the outside. So the inside, not too much, but I get a lot of airflow, making sure I check everything. I got a red car right up there, double check and make sure everything is safe. So this is why you need seasonal gear because winter gear doesn't have that mesh. It's gonna have abrasion resistance on the inside, outside, everywhere, not a lot of holes and you're not gonna get a lot of airflow and it's gonna be miserable. So there is seasonal gear out there for you. You just gotta check it out. And think of it as AC in a car and a heater in a car, okay? So during the winter time, you wanna put the heater on, right? Well, wear full gear that's gonna have a lot of heat holding capacity. So not a lot of airflow, uh, but still you wanna have some so you don't sweat your balls off, but you still wanna make sure you're nice and warm. And then in the summertime, what do you do? You turn on the heater? No, you don't. You turn on the AC, get nice and cool, nice breeze going through the nice, cool, comfortable AC unit. That's what this is. So you have to change with the seasons and that's why it's super important because you don't wanna overheat during the summertime and you don't wanna freeze during the wintertime. I just recently did a video on Lieutenant Colonel Allen West. Hopefully you're doing good, sir. But here's the thing, he sacrificed protection for comfort, basically. He's like, it's too hot, I'm not gonna wear my full face, I'm not gonna put on my jacket, I took it off. You know, if you wanna check out that video, I do have it linked in the description, double checking this person, making sure it's safe to go, and we're back on the road. So I talked about that, and he sacrificed protection for comfort, and you guys can't be doing that. We just talked about seasonal gear. Yes, you gotta spend a little bit more money, maybe you gotta you know, find some gear that doesn't look as cool for you. Let's go ahead and pick us a, a road with less traffic so we can focus on what is at hand and not really worry about all these extra hazards. So just double checking, guys. I wanna make sure I'm doing this safely so you guys get the best content. So that's the thing is you don't want to sacrifice anything for safety. You know, I'd rather sweat because you know what? Sweating and taking a shower is a lot easier than picking stuff out of your arms, picking stuff out of your face, having road rash, and now having to deal with, you know, your skin being damaged, broken bones. It, that takes a lot longer than it is to wipe off that sweat. So make sure you guys in the summertime wear mesh. I already talked about getting seasonal gear, but there's different kinds. I mean, I got the Ulta mesh uh, pants right here. I love these, a lot of mesh, a lot of area right here, but then you also have armor and abrasion resistance. There's no cars behind me, don't worry. And then also think about leather. You know, we talk about textiles all the time. This is a textile jacket, but there is what is called perforated leather. So, I mean, if you have that Harley sense, you know, you want to be like, I'm a Harley guy, I wear a lot of leather. Well, just get perforated leather stuffed with holes in it for the summertime. And then in the wintertime, get stuff that doesn't have holes and boom. If you take care of your leather, if you take care of your gear, it's going to last you years and years and years. And it's a huge investment in your own safety. Think of it as a slight insurance policy. Because remember guys, the smart rider system involves, you know, seeking out situational awareness and hazards. And that's what I've been doing this whole time and kind of showing you guys. And then also maintaining your fundamental skills. So having to turn, I'm practicing around these swerves, but then A is acquiring personal protective gear and utilizing it. And that is what I want you guys to be doing. I want you to think about that just as much as you think about perfecting your skills and perfecting your situational awareness. So let's just jump into the tip number three. All right, so we talked about what kind of gear, there's seasonal gear, so what's the bare minimum you should do? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, full gear. You're gonna have to have full gear, head to toe. He uh, helmet, gloves, jacket, pants, boots, that's what you gotta do. Now, how do you do it, okay? So what is, the, so what are my recommendations? Hey, there's a bug flu up in here. What are my recommendations? 
this is a great mesh jacket and I have the Reacts Alta mesh jacket that's also a great jacket but here's the thing I love this jacket and this is the Fly Cool Pro 2 so a lot of mesh and you know what I got this a couple years ago I might actually just rebuy it because I love it it fits good it gives me great airflow and it's kind of big enough to where I can throw a jacket underneath in the winter time like I talked about also get yourself a well ventilated full face helmet now the whole thing with Lieutenant Colonel Allen West he's like I didn't want to put on a full face because it's too hot I'm gonna sweat that's why you got to get good ventilation now you can't really tell let's go ahead and move this down a little bit I do have a nice little vent right here but it's blocked because of the GoPro let's go ahead and put you back buddy and that's not that big of a deal because I can always just do this now I don't always recommend that you know just do a quick little burst so you get some nice uh, airflow on that sweaty face of yours the reason why I don't recommend that it's gonna dry your eyes out I get allergies I'm gonna let pollen and a bunch of other stuff in there and it's not a good thing but you know at a stop sign like up here go ahead and pop it open another thing is I recommend getting some good gloves now since we're gonna come to a stop I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at behind me make sure nobody's coming so this is perfect so let's go ahead and put it in neutral because I don't see anybody coming I'm gonna stop here can't see anything I'll open up the view when it's time to go but these are the reacts gloves I forgot I think they're Trasker gloves anyways I got them on cycle gear it's basically Revzilla and cycle gears product same thing with the pants and I have that jacket it's good stuff anyways perforated leather this is right here is gonna keep your hands somewhat cool there's other stuff that's even better but here's the thing I absolutely love it get some good gear I get to see some people coming up behind me pretty soon but a well ventilated helmet so if I'm stuck in traffic I could just pop it open get some airflow and then pop it closed when I need to go I am always 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 going to recommend full gear when it comes to the boots and stuff that's you know your feet are just going to sweat go ahead and put some dry powder in your shoes and on your toes and then that's just the way it's going to be now here's the tip that that I learned as a firefighter and, and I'm talking like really hot where I was working I was in Yuma for the first 30 years of my life and almost my whole career and Yuma gets to like 120 in the summertime you can cook eggs in the winter time on the ground guys it is insane and I was fighting fires with full turnout gear or extricating people on the street on the blacktop and then cooking myself melting shoes guys that's how bad it was and here's the thing that I found that I could withstand all that is staying hydrated I, I mean it you guys, you guys hear about it all the time it's like be hydrated you're gonna do uh, a lot better here there there it's good for your heart good guys water is just good overall but man is it gonna help you out when it comes to heat resistance and tolerance if you guys know anything about firefighting or anything about hydraulics or anything about water properties it's a great conductor of heat so the more fluids you have in your body it's just gonna it's gonna attract it but here's the thing it's gonna dissipate it pretty dang well and if I'm wrong about that I will annotate it but guys the enemy is the heat it is not the Sun it's the radiated heat that hits us and make sure you stay covered obviously for skin cancer but here's the thing staying hydrated is gonna make you better because you're gonna be able to tolerate more so you're gonna have a cooler ride when it comes to what's going up in here so you don't have an ego of like I gotta get home I gotta get home I gotta get home you're not doing that you're focused on hey I'm having a good time I you know I, I could feel the heat but it's not a big deal like I can feel the heat on my body but I'm like it's not a big deal and there's an intersection coming up and this guy just pulled out and he's gonna haul ass is anybody else gonna come out no and we are good back to yellow stage and that's the thing drink lots of water don't drink so much that you're gonna get hypernatremia where you're gonna lose a lot of electrolytes and that's another problem that can happen when you're out riding around or even doing anything outside is make sure that you stay on top of your fluid intake and then also if you have to do a little bit of Gatorade in it or do a little bit of one of those little thirst quenchers where it has electrolytes in it you might have to replace it because you're gonna be sweating a lot and I haven't even talked about how to control sweat what's the best way what's how to how to how to utilize the body's natural mechanism of cooling you off I haven't even talked about that because at the end of the day guys these four tips is all you're gonna need and everything will just follow through think about it think about it read a book anyways I would like to say thank you so much to my crew for making all these things possible. Look, I'm having a good time. And I want you guys to be absolutely safe. So I'm going to put my hand back on the handlebar and enjoy the rest of my ride. Be sure to do these tips so that you stay alive.